Hey folks, we are at the end of our two-week trial period of using OLR anomalies to predict earthquakes alongside space weather and earth spots. Let's take a look at the eight largest earthquakes of this two-week period, all magnitude 6.4 or higher. Before we get going, let me remind everyone that 90% of anomaly readings will be false positive for earthquake precursors. Anyone can look at color gradients, but you have to see the whole picture and factor in outside information. The sun, the storms, the volcanoes, and the OLR charts all matter, and we dig much deeper into that topic at suspiciousobservers.org. But let's go right to November 8th, our first OLR prediction ever. We saw Sumatra as primary, but with a trailing energy line up across Vietnam and towards Japan. Let's go and find the OLR in that area. Do you see it in the Indian Ocean, sort of stationary while everything else is moving around it? Just a few hours later, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake struck the Sumatra region. Technically, Sabang, but as close as you can get. Prediction number two was on November 10th. Peru and Chile showed signs of anomalous readings, both positive and negative. It was again, just a few hours later, that the first of two magnitude 6.9 earthquakes struck Chile that night, not too far apart from each other. The very next night, the 11th, we noted that Sumatra was still showing scary readings. But the night after that, November 12th, we noticed that it began moving eastward towards China, almost on the same line as we had seen four days earlier. Energy shifted to China, and in the East China Sea that night, a magnitude 6.7 struck where the energy was shifting. We took some time off, and four days later, the lone quake on the list not predicted hit Greece. But it sure got my attention, and on November 17th, up top there we noted that the energy from Greece, which we should have seen, was shifting to the east, and also that we really needed to monitor the Solomon Islands. Well, let's start with the Solomon Islands. Powerful earth spot to the north and OLR anomalies abounding. Then one day later, about 24 hours after the prediction, a magnitude 7.0 struck the Solomon Islands. Well, what about the other part of that prediction, that the Greece energy was shifting east? You see it here. Unfortunately, what struck Afghanistan did not meet the threshold magnitude, but it was the largest quake of the day it occurred. Then came November 19th and 20th, our final predictions of the test period, and there was less certainty about magnitude forecast, but northwestern South America and Central America was the only place we really deemed worthy of mentioning, basically the equatorial region of the Americas. We made no other predictions in the final two days because global quakes were expected to be lower due to lack of space energy factors. However, as our regular daily viewers know, after a few days of quiet, the global earthquake alert due to the sun and planets kick back up on November 24th. Just hours later, with the equatorial Americas still the only alert, two tremendous rumbles struck deep underground near the Peru-Brazil border region. This concludes the report of the test period for our OLR anomaly-based earthquake forecasting. We like to believe it was a fairly good first try, but we must first examine our failures just as closely. In our first prediction, we saw Sumatra hit that night and Japan rumble four days later, but Vietnam never did. It appears to just have been a jump over point for the energy. We also missed the Greece earthquake, although we really shouldn't have with the energy. The OLR was clearly anomalous. And finally, it took four days after our last prediction for it to strike, which is the longest of any of our successful forecasts, and four days may be too long to be considered useful. There's more details coming at suspiciousobservers.org, and make sure to follow us for more OLR predictions in the future. Wishing you all well, eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.